Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. On our last episode, we reinstalled the pressure plate on the Ford Model A chassis. We adjusted the clutch fingers and reattached the transmission bell housing. We replaced the throwout bearing with a new one, and our transmission should be all set for the foreseeable future. Today, we need to put all the pieces of the chassis back together again, adjust the clutch pedal, and install our modified push button starter switch. We're also hoping to have our temporary seat and dashboard mounted before the weekend is over. This is going to take a while. So let's get to the barn and let's get back to work. We began the day by reattaching the front radius ball to the bottom of the clutch bell housing. A loose radius ball cap can cause steering problems. Our radius rod ball cap is cast, so you have to be careful to lock it down, but not strain it too far to cause it to break. The radius ball itself is a rubber style ball used to absorb shock. A couple of castle nuts and cottard pins later, and we were on to the U-joint. Back when we removed the rear end at the U-joint, we discovered that the previous owner had not applied any grease to the U-joint. Normally, it should have been caked with grease, and if we'd never pulled it off to get to the clutch bell housing, we'd have been in for some real problems down the road. We scraped off the remains of the previous gasket with a razor blade and prepped the inner U-joint cover for a new one. With the cover ready, we moved on to grease. It's important to pack the U-joint directly with lots and lots of grease. We hand packed the U-joint real well, and then once the inner cover was on, we greased it some more through the grease fitting. It isn't unusual to use almost an entire tube of grease to do the job. Grease, as with anything related to the Model A, is controversial. Many guys like to use John Deere cornhead grease. Others like a high temperature grease. We went with the high temperature grease but I think both types probably work just fine. Our number one employee, Brian, arrived just in time to distract us, oh, I mean, help us with the starter switch. One modification that we're adding to our car is a no-foot starter. While doing some research, George happened across a few small businesses that build a no-foot starter for Model A's. After studying some online pictures and thinking it over, George decided he would try to build one himself and it turned out great. 
It's just a simple solenoid starter switch system that can be added to the existing starter switch with no extra drilling or fasteners added. It can also be easily removed if we choose to down the road. Being a small business ourselves, we understand the importance of supporting small businesses that support our Model A hobby. So we aren't going to delve into how we designed our switch to undercut them. If you're mechanically inclined, you can probably figure out how to add one yourself if you really want to. If you're interested in purchasing something similar, a simple search online will turn up a few options. Next up, it was time to reinstall and set the brake and clutch pedals. We lightly greased the clutch and brake pedal shaft and then slid the brake and clutch pedals into place. We hooked up the brake and brake rod and adjusted the clutch pedal so that it had about one inch of travel before it disengaged the clutch. We checked the throw out bearing and it turned freely. Our adjustments had paid off. Finally, we reattached the rear braking rods and the exhaust pipe and slid our new rear spring U-bolts into place on the rear end of the car. These U-bolts hold the rear leaf spring into the cross member of the frame. These new ones were made to the original Ford blueprint sizes, so they are the correct length and don't need to be cut down like the imports. The imports were what was previously on our car, and unfortunately, they used the wrong size rear spring clip bars. We've got to put in an order to get a new pair before we can securely attach the rear leaf spring up into the cross member. But That'll be a job for next time. With the chassis largely back together and Brian's contractually obligated work hours for the day set to expire, it was time to call it a day. Join us next time as we continue our wintertime work as we get closer and closer to restoring this classic Ford Model A on the next episode of Epic Restorations.